we got going on today, folks. We got a little bit of Quizlet Live because we're going to be uh, we got that uh, Unit Seven assessment that I'm going to be opening up uh, here, and you should be able to take that before the end of the hour. I kid you not. Um, there's no earthly reason that any of you should leave today without taking that Unit Seven assessment. It has got to be. In terms of easiest tests that have ever been written, this has got to be near the top, okay? There's 33 points on it, and 29 of them are on the terms that we're about to study right now, okay? Uh, the other four questions I just pulled randomly from the slides or from the, uh, the stuff that you were to take and put on the Google document, uh, excuse me, yeah, the, uh, the Unit 7 document. So it's not really that hard. It's just one of those things that if you do it, you're going to get pretty close to full credit. I can almost guarantee you if you uh, have been paying any type of attention over the course of the last couple of weeks. So that is what we're going to be doing here near the end. There's a couple stuff out, uh, a couple of things out of the Unit 7 document that I'm going to talk about explicitly. So if you have any, uh, oh, I don't know, thoughts about going on and doing the Unit 7 assessment just yet, why don't you wait until I explicitly tell you some of the stuff that's right you know, off of the slides that I'm going to give you. Know what I mean? Okay, so hold off on that until I at least give you those answers before we get to that. So yeah, that's what we got going on today. Does that sound good to you guys? Yeah. All right. Would everybody for me right now, both in the online world and in class, pretty please go to quizlet.live. That's quizlet.live. Trust everybody online can see that code. We got three, five, one, eight, seven, two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty two, twenty four, twenty six, twenty seven. Plus two. We're almost there. When we got there, twenty-seven, hot dog. Unless I miscount, no, I didn't add the two there online. But uh, I'll give you about thirty seconds to get in if you haven't done so already. It's a horse racing game, just like this weekend. Here we go. There's your spirit animals, folks, and they're racing.
uh, a little bit in the news that I, I'm going to show you later today that has a little bit to do with that uh, in terms of like youth and social media and what the school can and cannot do. But um, it's also a pretty ugly story. But anyway, um, let me put this up there and I am going to show you this one real quick. Oops. Just a five minute or so. Let me. What are you talking about? I've never infringed on your basic rights. Your freedom of speech? Well, yeah, I guess I cut you off sometimes, but that's only because you ask me for money and sick jazz bots on me. But if you feel oppressed, by all means, go ahead and speak your mind. Oh, hey, sorry to interrupt, but we've got to answer a letter. Dear Tim and Moby, We've been studying the Bill of Rights in class, and it seems like my school is restricting some of my rights. Are they allowed to do this? Sincerely, Phoebe. That's an interesting question, Phoebe. Although students do have rights, the Supreme Court has ruled that public schools can forbid certain activities and behaviors. The main restrictions involve two amendments in the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment and the Fourth Amendment. The First Amendment states that the government can't prevent you from expressing yourself through speech or writing. It also prohibits the government from promoting any particular religion. The Fourth Amendment says that you can't be searched or have your property taken away without good reason. But students aren't fully covered by these rights because most are under 18 years of age, and schools act in loco parentis. That's a Latin phrase meaning in place of parents. Basically, it means that schools are responsible for kids' well-being in the same way parents are. Your parents can set rules for you that you have to follow, and schools can too. Since private schools aren't funded or run by the state, they can set more restrictive rules than public schools. For example, in almost every state, private school teachers can discipline students with corporal punishment or physical force, while fewer than half the states allow it in public schools. But parents and students may disagree with school policy and can sue if they feel their rights have been violated. In rare instances, when the law isn't settled or clear, the case will go all the way up to the Supreme Court. Like back in the 60s, when some students in Iowa wore black armbands to protest the Vietnam War. The school suspended them, and their parents sued. The case went to the Supreme Court, which ruled that political expression was protected by the First Amendment, even for students. As one of the justices said, students do not shed their constitutional rights at the schoolhouse gate. In a different case, the court ruled that public schools can't force you to say anything you don't want to, even the Pledge of Allegiance. They also can't force any religious beliefs on you, like making you pray or sing religious songs. They can't stop you from praying quietly to yourself, but if a public school encourages prayer, it might violate the First Amendment. Well, no, you can't do anything you want. If you disrupt class or use vulgar language, you can get punished. After all, other kids have a right to an education without a bunch of distractions. That's why many state courts have upheld cell phone bans in schools. Teachers can't teach if students are texting and taking calls. You can't necessarily wear anything you want either, since public schools are usually allowed to enforce dress codes. You can even get disciplined if you're away from school, like on a field trip or something. And if you work for the school newspaper or yearbook, you can't write whatever you want. Since these are official school publications, the school can edit their content. But there are limits. The school has to have a good reason for refusing to publish something. Right, the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment doesn't protect anyone, even adults, from all searches. In fact, police can search anyone, as long as they have probable cause to believe he's breaking the law. For instance, if an officer smells alcohol on a driver's breath, he can search the car. 
In a school environment, teachers and other officials operate on a similar principle. If they have good reason to believe you've cheated on a test, they can search your bag, your desk, and your pockets for a cheat sheet. Even if there isn't a cheat sheet, you can get punished if they find something else, like cigarettes. And if you're keeping something illegal in your locker, forget it. Lockers are school property, so schools have a lot of leeway to conduct searches. Since schools want to maintain drug-free environments, they can also give students drug tests if they sign up for any extracurricular activity. That includes everything from soccer to choir. You're right, that's not how the law is applied to adults. But the Supreme Court has ruled that since drugs are such a menace, public schools can take all sorts of measures to prevent students from getting involved with them. It's a small price to pay. As long as you don't use drugs, you really don't have anything to worry about. Well, think of it from the school's perspective. They have a really tricky job. They have to create a safe learning environment and, at the same time, protect everyone's constitutional rights. If you think that makes me the man, then so be it. I'm the man. folks has largely to do with student rights and we talked about the the court the case that is in the middle of the supreme court right now yes um so can somebody just kind of remind me what's the supreme court case right now that we talked about earlier in the week so we can all just kind of be refreshed please yeah so the, so that 14 year old the girl back in, in 2014 she puts on uh remind was it snapchat yeah she puts on Snapchat, F my cheerleading team, F the school, all of that stuff, right? Pretty nasty language, right? Okay. And now for that one, I think that we kind of saw the that there were kind of both sides to the issue, and it was largely like a freedom of speech thing, like a like a, a First Amendment case, right? And that's why it's taken since 2017 to get to the federal Supreme Court, which is you know, adds to another element of what we're talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking about the different tiers of courts. Like if you, you know, get in, in trouble and you have to show up in court, it's not like you show up to the Supreme Court. That takes a long time, right? Because there's three levels for the state. There's three levels for the federal level to even get there. Um, can I show you now? This is kind of a loose affiliation with what we're about to talk about here. Okay. Um, and this is uncomfortable, what we're about to talk about here. But I want you to uh, just kind of watch this. Let me pause this for a second. Let me pause this for a second. So I, I apologize that this is going to be uncomfortable. But this is involving students from a school at Big Lake. Has anybody already heard this story? Nobody's heard the story. Okay. So this story developed yesterday at about 5 a.m. And since then, did you hear that Big Lake has gone distance learning because of threats to the school and or whatever? I guess that was the reason. I don't know exactly why. But um, I want us to kind of watch this and kind of see how this story unfolds. Okay. So outside Big Lake High School, okay. uh, the Hornets Way highlights the school's core, blah, 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 blah. Let me uh, make, oops. Let me pause, make sure that I'm sharing to the kids online. Sorry for the delay. All right, there we go. Um, so this is pretty upsetting and hard to watch, but um, would everybody read this line right here? This is, a, you guys know what a promposal is, right? This didn't exist back in my day, but apparently when you ask somebody to prom, it's gotta be as uh, such a big deal as like a, like a, I don't know, a marriage proposal or something. But anyway, the promposal poster read, if I was black, I'd be picking cotton, but I'm white, so I'm picking you. Prom? Okay. So um, they're going to show the story here in just a little bit. Sorry, I'm kind of struggling with the Outside technology the portion. There we go. I'm so sorry. I've got to show this another way so the people online can see it. It'll take just a second. Do 
values aren't what's getting the attention. It's this viral promposal with a racist quote on it that's putting the city of Big Lake and its high school on the map for all the wrong reasons. Kind of growing up here, it doesn't really surprise me, sadly. Not at all. Not at all. Raven Kowajala grew up in Big Lake and is a 2018 graduate of Big Lake High School. That's a product of the environment that the school produces. For Kojala, this incident is personal because she says this isn't the first time the school has had to address the issues of racism. They worry about the white children in the picture and their future, and they don't worry about the effects of all the children of color who have to see it, who go to school with them. The district disagrees, saying in a statement that it's taking this report seriously and does not condone racism in any form. This is a reflection of them continually trying to make racial issues not seem like a problem. A reflection that not only the district disagrees with, but also some Big Lake parents. This is not a racist town. This is not a racist school. This is at the heart of the people who made that choice. They are, as all of us are responsible for our own action. District leaders sent out an alert to parents, teachers, and students letting them know that they will be moving into distance learning for Thursday and Friday due to some threats they've been receiving as a result of that viral photo. In Big Lake, Devon Roming, CARE 11 News. So, Uncomfortable as it is, okay, I was, uh, I was, <laughs> now I'll never uh, understand what it's like to be a person of color and, and see that happen in your community. Okay? It was very upsetting for me as a teacher to hear the students that had graduated say that, oh, well, that was just something that happened at Big Lake or that's something that's systemic and that's cool. That's, I'm not surprised that that type of thing happens. Okay, and what I really don't want to have happen is have that type of environment something that you students ever feel unsafe about. Okay, so I guess my point to uh, a lot of this, uh, a lot of this matter is, is I don't want you to ever feel as though this isn't something that is open to talk about here. Does that make sense, folks? Okay, and that I'm here for you if you ever need to talk about any of these things, and we have many resources in the school if you ever need to talk about anything like this. Yes? Very good? Okay. Excellent. Anything to add to that, uh, Mr. Williams? Yeah, if I could take about maybe about 10 minutes. Please, please do. First of all, let me uh, thank you, Mr. Pike, for letting me be into your class. Yes. Uh, and I like to kind of get to know people, and I'm a mover. So I like to move around and look at eyes and <laughs> get feelings and emotion. How many people were disturbed when they saw this post up here? Yeah. It should. Thank you. Let me give a little bit. How many people know who I am first? I always want to give my history. My roles here are many, but my two main roles are academic and diversity coordinator or the equity and inclusion for this school. So when I see stuff like that, it's not super surprising to me being a black person working in a white environment. Does that make sense? Okay. What we have to understand is that we are at a pivotal point in our history you know, I'm a history teacher. <laughs> I did, yeah. And I'm going to tie this into the Supreme Court as well, real quickly. We, we are at a pivotal point for one reason and one reason only. Let me put this number into your head 401 years. And what I mean by that is 401 years of oppression of a people, mainly African Americans. The country was built on three races. Can anybody tell me what the three races were? In 1619, this country was built on three. Name them. Yes, you do. You do. Who were the first people in this country when the settlers came over? Native Americans, that's one. Who was the second? <laughs> European Americans, very good, thank you. Very good. European Americans. Who were the third? There's one more. Country was built on three different races. You know what they did? 
Who did the work and the crops? So on that sign up there, on that sign, what did it say? What did that sign say? No, it said something about what word was it? Cotton, right? Picking cotton. Who picked the cotton? Three. There you go. Three. See, I got caught them. <laughs> Three. There were no Latinos, there were the Chinese, there were three. Native Americans had their land taken from them by the white European settlers, and slaves were the property of those European leaders or the slave owners. Fact. Oppression started then, 401 years, 2021, it's still here today. It was rearranged, or re brought back up with the knee on the neck of George Floyd. We are at a point in our country where people of color have said enough. So every time you turn on the news, everything. Who's that from? I like props too. <laughs> Real quickly, this right here can catch everything, right? Because you'll do this. I saw protests. I was like, mm. you catch everything. Real quickly, I love that Mr. Piper is showing you this because what this is is real life people. Well, who would do something? <laughs> it's, it blows my mind to write something like that and not think you're going to have some kickback. Everybody know what kickback is, right? When you disagree with something. The goal of the mission is to make sure that everybody gets the same education and feel comfortable within their skin in the school in which they're being served. Right? Okay. I can go on. But I <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and effort. I'll say this to you. Nice, nice work. And what he's talking about and how it relates, and this is my final piece. Plessy Burgess Ferguson, Supreme Court case, ties into this. Mm -hmm. The rights era, Voting Rights Act, ties into this. You know, so it's a tie with it, okay? Anytime you need me, I'm. Yeah, no, it, it's Don't interesting you, you say that because we might, we might actually get to Brown versus Board today. Oh, okay. um, so, um, <laughs> yes, we should have given a round of applause. Excellent. Um, so here's who we are, folks, okay? Um, now, I understand that those conversations are very, very difficult, okay? But um, I believe that those difficult conversations are necessary so that, you know, years from now, I'm not reading about you as students thinking that we swept that type of stuff under the rug. Does that make sense? A little bit? Okay. Very good. Um, so... Here's what we're going to do now. We are going to go right to um, the Unit 7 document because I've got some stuff it's, uh, that we're going to uh, go right off of here. Okay. The different tiers of the courts. Now, we're kind of juxtaposing them here. We've got the Tier 1, Tier 2 of the state and the federal. So federal on the right side, state on the left there. Now, for the most part, these base courts at any level, okay, so the county courts, district courts, or circuit courts, this is probably where most Americans are going to spend a bulk of their time, okay? Federal courts, that's if you're in some type of tax situation. That's if you've got some international trade. That's, you know, if you're part of some special agency. For the most part, the appellate or appeals court, that's if you're appealing the ruling of the first court. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's if you're appealing the first court. And, and then we'll come back to we'll come back to that slide. And you guys know how to access this, right? The try through Google's presentation or uh, Google presentation. So then the tier three, both both tier threes are the highest state court or the uh, highest federal court. So the highest court in the land. Okay. 
So here's the highest court in the United States. Here's the highest court in the United States. Now, this part I think is relatively surprising. Okay, This part is relatively surprising uh, for me every time I talk about it. Qualifications for the Supreme Court justice in Minnesota. In order to be a judge, all you have to do is essentially be a practicing lawyer or a practicing attorney. And when I, I put practicing in there uh, deliberately, because that essentially means that you have to hold that license. Okay? You have to hold that license. Uh, Minnesota Supreme Court, general trial court, and intermediate court judges are elected by citizens of the state. So when you go into uh, when you go into vote, you know it, it's just like the latest election. When you guys turn eighteen, you go into vote. It's not just voting for the president. It's not just voting for stuff in your county. It's not just voting for stuff in your your state. You're also electing these judges. Okay. Then you've got your lower courts here, your municipal courts. Now, these are your basic courts. These are going to be uh, like on any level or excuse me, it, mostly in cities. So here's municipal cities. This is kind of like the base level of a state system. If you're like, I hate to say if you're in a more rural area, but this is like basically if you're not in a city. Does that make sense? Okay. So it has nothing to do with being urban or rural. It just means like, are you not in a city? Well, then it's most likely going to be in a township. Okay. You also might spend a little bit of time in a small claims court. That's if you uh, are dealing with a sum of money that is under $3,000. Okay, so for a lot of people, this comes up like with, like if you rent from something, uh, like if you rent an apartment, uh, it might be a disagreement between the renter and, the, and the, the owner of the apartment, like who owes who money. And because typically that's a smaller amount of money that might come up in this, in this one right here. Okay, so tribal courts are just going to have their own autonomy dealing with different reservation issues right there. Very good, cool. Do you need me to keep, stay on this slide for a little bit? Yes, okay, then I will do just that. That will stay right there, okay. Oh boy. Questions, thoughts, feelings, concerns, either from anybody online or from anybody in class because the next thing that we are going to do, folks, is I am going to open up that assessment.